Hello everyone and welcome to the first ever episode of Assassin's Creed Explained, where each episode I'll explain something from the Assassin's Creed universe, whether it be characters, groups or lore, and to start I'm going to talk about the rivalry between the Assassins and the Templars, as well as why it's not just a clear cut case of the good versus the bad. And without further ado, let's get into it. The Assassins and Templars are two orders who have fought one another since at least the 12th century and likely before. The battle between the two still wages on in the modern day. We've seen this conflict countless times across a variety of Assassin's Creed media, usually from the perspective of the Assassins, and at first glance it's very easy to consider the two polar opposites of one another. We've seen selfless assassins and tyrannical Templars fight again and again, making it easy to think these two couldn't be further from one another. But in reality, they're very similar to one another, in the sense that they both strive for the same goal, being peace. The difference between the two is the ways in which they go about achieving it. The Templars have a very sceptical view of the world, thinking that they should maintain peace through order. They also have the view that the ends justify the means. Even if it means having ultimate control or there being some casualties, they don't mind as long as order is achieved, and from their point of view, peace via extension. The Assassin's view, however, is a far more optimistic one, believing in freedom and that peace and freedom work hand in hand, and that the Templar's goal of ultimate control only opposes that freedom. They also believe that every life means something, and in their case, the ends don't justify the means if it means the suffering of the common man. And there's a great scene in Assassin's Creed 3, which pretty much sums up both sides perfectly. What is it the Templars truly seek? Order. Purpose. Direction. No more than that. It's your lot that means to confound with this nonsense talk of freedom. Time was. The Assassins professed a far more sensible goal. That of peace. Freedom is peace. Oh no. It's an invitation to chaos. Only look at this little revolution your friends have started. I have stood before the Continental Congress and listened to them stamp and shout. All in the name of liberty. But it is just noise. And this is why you favor Lee? He understands the needs of this would-be nation far better than the Jobinels who profess to represent it. <laughs> it seems your tongue has tasted sour grapes. The people have made their choice. And it was Washington. The people chose nothing. It was done by a group of privileged cowards seeking only to enrich themselves. They convened in private and made a decision that would benefit them. Oh, they might have dressed it up with pretty words. That does not make it true. The only difference, Connor, the only difference between myself and those you aid is that I do not feign affection. So that scene right there basically sums the conflict between the two up perfectly, and Assassin's Creed 3 surprisingly is probably my favourite representation of the Templars because of dialogue like this. It's far more compelling to have two sides strive for one goal in very different ways, rather than simply having good guys and bad guys fight one another. So on that note, I'd like to discuss some of the reasons for the Templars being right, and some of the reasons for the Assassins being right. So for the Templars being right, I thought I'd mention Due to the Templars being the antagonists of the series, they're often quite malicious and bloodthirsty, so I'm not so much going to be talking about those specific examples that are there just so there's a villain, but more the actual ideology, as opposed to just the villainous people we face that are just straight up bad. Just because we've seen Templars be undebatably awful or violent at times, doesn't mean that they all are or that the Order condones it. The Templars have their own rules just as the Assassins do. So anyway, now that's out of the way, onto some of the reasons people believe that the Templars are in the right. The first reason that often comes up for the Templars being right is that the people need to be controlled, that people are so weak to desire and hubris that a higher power needs to be there to keep them in check. Secondly, that the beliefs of the Assassins are naive. This is something that again comes up a lot in Assassin's Creed 3, but it's the belief that believing that freedom and peace are synonymous are just quite childlike and just generally idealistic. And the Templar's negative, quite sceptical, cynical outlook on the world comes out a lot when you really look into their order. And the final reason for the Templars being in the right is that control is far safer than peace, and we can often see peace turn into anarchy 
as we have admittedly with the assassins. Now onto the points for the assassins. First of all, that freedom is just a right that everyone deserves, and that opposing that is inherently evil, even if it is for the goal of peace. Secondly, control is a gateway to injustice. The assassins will often fight against the power of the Templar, because they believe that nobody should have it, and if they do, it will be abused, and we have seen that in the past. And finally, I thought I'd bring up the words of the Creed, that nothing is true and everything is permitted, which basically stands against everything the Templars believe in, stating that nothing is an absolute and can be changed, and that we are and should be in control of our own lives, and as Ezio says in Revelations, that we are architects of our own actions. So to conclude, both sides have very different ways of striving for the same honourable goal, there's definitely points to be made for each of them being flawed or in the right, and both are extremes that go against one another, so naturally many people believe one side is wholly right and the other is wholly wrong, and we've seen this stubbornness before in past games, and the two sides rarely ever agree, and are probably just going to be a war until one of them ceases to exist. So anyway, that is the very first episode of Assassin's Creed Explained, I really hope you guys enjoyed this one, leave a like if you did, and maybe tell me why if you didn't. I really like doing stuff like this where I can sort of just talk about stuff in the past of the series, it's not speculation or leaks, and I've, I really enjoyed making this one. So if you guys want to see more, then maybe leave suggestions for stuff you want to see, and tell me what you think about this, do you agree with the Assassins, or the Templars, or maybe a bit of both? I'm really interested to know what you guys think. Anyway, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.